it seems as though I remember and right now are opposites. But in fact, they're not that different. Uh, they both are based on immediacy. The things he remembers are the things he remembers each next second. So he goes from mammy cookie jars to his first direction to chalk to when green blackboards first came out or whatever he does next. It's whatever he's thinking right now. So the spontaneity of memory isn't all that different from the spontaneity of what do the trees look like when I don't have my glasses on and I'm nearsighted. And the spontaneity of this is my left toe, it looks better than my right toe, and the sudden why toes, uh, which is sort of uh, intelligently dumb, isn't that different from the sequence of memory. So the sequence of observation and the sequence of memory both he contrives a terrific spontaneity. I think play is an important word, um, as with watching TV and sunning and uh, writing and making, I don't want to just say visual works, little matchboxes and all kinds of things. Making art should feel like what you want to do. Uh, it is playful in that sense, though it's also perfectly serious. And when he says, uh, I didn't like Van Gogh, then I did, now I can't stand him, it's an account of spontaneous responses, and it also has a certain seriousness to it, as does the gay play, which can also be called the straight, uh, the gay way which could also be called in another production, The Straight Way. Um, he's thinking and he's refusing to seem ponderous or heavy or elaborately premeditated in the thinking. January 13th, Mozart is coming out of the machine, real soft, just for company, like that of a cat in a room. A bright red Camparian soda sits off to my right, just within arm's reach a moment away from the ashtray, a deep blue enameled disc inlaid with a sliver of white moon and sprinkled with silver specks of something to represent the stars, all somewhat obscured by three cigarette butts snuggled up close together, spoon style, that each says true in tiny blue letters if you look real close. My left leg over the arm of the chair swings back and forth, and back and forth. Shoes overhead cross the room. Outside my window, snow is falling down against a translucent sky of deep lavender with a touch of orange zigzagged along the bottom into a silhouette of black buildings. The icebox clicks off, then shudders. And it's as simple as this, what I want to tell you about. If perhaps not much, Everything, painting this moment for you tonight. Imaginary still life number one. I close my eyes. I see a light green vase, a very pale light green vase. Right beside it is something black, something small. It is a small black ashtray, getting smaller by the moment until, really, it is hardly more than now, a tiny speck. Imaginary still life, number two. I close my eyes. I see white, lots of white, and gray, cool gray, cool gray fabric shadows. It is a painting with no yellow by a very old man. Imaginary still life number three. I close my eyes. I see bright orange, almost red, a touch of purple, a speck of black, and a thick bluish stem, an exotic flower of some sort, driftwood, bamboo, a figurine, chartreuse, 
1953. This is a Polynesian still life. Imaginary still life number four. I close my eyes. I see a white statue, say 10 inches high, of David, alabaster, and pink rose petals sprinkled upon a black velvet drape. This is a sissy still life, silly but pretty, and in a certain way almost religious, Eastern religious. This still life is secretly smiling. Imaginary still life number five. I close my eyes. I see a charming nosegay of violets in an ordinary drinking glass. That's all. Imaginary still life number six. I close my eyes. I see old fruit, pots and pans, and various and scattered utensils. Brown, art, Dutch, by nobody in particular, museum, and so on to the Franz Halls. Imaginary still life number seven. I close my eyes. I see a lazy guitar, a little potted cactus plant, and the rainbow blendings of very bright colors woven into a poncho, slung across a hand-painted wooden chair. 1955. This is a tourista postcard still life. Imaginary still life number eight. I close my eyes. I see pink and green and gold all mixed up together, but now slowly evolving into three distinct shapes. It is a pink kimono, gently discarded upon the corner of a green dressing table, which enters the picture frame at a very sharp angle. Behind it stands a gold screen of three panels. In this particular Japanese still life, one gets the impression that something is going on that cannot be seen. Imaginary still life number nine. I close my eyes. I see, upon the corner of a black lacquered end table, I see a clear crystal ashtray containing a long white cigarette butt crushed up into the figure Z. Pink smears along the filter's edge implicate a woman. And now I can smell blue smoke in the air lingering from a most recent exit perhaps in a huff. A dozen dark red roses in a very tall vase completes this elegant, if icy, still life. A still life with a story, and probably a sad one. Imaginary still life number 10. I close my eyes. I see something copper, a teapot with missing lid and dried cornflowers in an earthenware pot against a brown velvet drape. Sniff. I can smell last week's clay still in the air as Mrs. Black, my high school art teacher, leans over my shoulder, trying not to be too impressed with the dashing highlights I have no doubt overindulged in to impress her with. The Gay Way. The Gay Way a play. The curtain rises to reveal a typical New York City village bedroom of the mid-fifties. Two young men, Bob and Dick, are in bed together asleep. Arm in arm, their bodies are covered from the waists down with a white sheet. Morning sunlight is streaming through the window as Bob begins to stir. Bob, yawning. I guess I'd better be getting up. As Bob begins to pull back the sheet, the curtain quickly drops because, you see, male nudity was not allowed on stage in the mid-fifties, and homosexual themes were heavily frowned upon. As the indignant audience storms out, storms out of the theater, shouting, Goddamn pansies, and 
We want our money back. The play continues behind the curtain as Dick gets out of bed and joins Bob on the floor for some very wild lovemaking. Use your imagination here, much to the amusement of the stagehands, who you see are the real audience. Some notes on the gay way. Unfortunately, only a limited number of seats, in quotation marks, will be available due to union laws uh, pertaining to a fixed number of stagehands allowed on stage per performance. The author has nothing against a male and female production, so long as a homosexual audience is used and the title be changed appropriately to The Straight Way. Should your production be raided, the author recommends that you try to accept the raid as part of the play. Right now, out in the sun, copper tone suntan oil on. Vermont, Calais, 1973, with a yellow bathing suit on. One of three I got in Paris this spring, which actually are underwear. One brown, one red, and this yellow one. A big white towel draped over a lounge chair is what I am on. What I am writing on is a national clipboard under a tablet of such very thin blue lines resting on the arm of this chair with a black flare. It is not my purpose to bore you. It is my purpose to, well, I want to throw everything out of my head as much as possible so I can simply write from about what is at this very moment, right now. Right now, looking up from this page, I see much blurry green. I haven't got my glasses on. How strange that in so doing, I completely overlooked my two feet which I can see quite well, even without my glasses on. They are a bit bigger than one, me, might wish. And the two little toes have obviously spent too much time inside, not very good for them, shoes. The new big toenail, right, is much nicer than the old one that got ripped off on a rock in the lake last summer. Feet. Looking real hard at feet right now, I am wondering, why toes? Joe Brainerd had a way with banality that it's like a lot of great writers had a way with banality. Um, Rambo did. Anyway, this is called What I Did This Summer. What I Did This Summer. When people ask me what I did this summer, I say nothing, but of course this is not entirely true. What I mean by nothing is that I gave up smoking and pills and all work for the summer, which didn't leave me with too much to do. So I did a lot of reading, sunning, exercising, and TV. So it was a very relaxing summer, the result of which was that I gained 20 pounds, built up my arms a bit, got a good tan, and I got to where I could just relax and take things as they come more. However, I've been back in the city for a week now, and my 20 pounds, I can feel them going. And I'm just as nervous with people as before. And as for all that reading, my head seems to have no place for information. A bad case of in one ear and out the other. But I enjoyed the reading I did, and the being able to relax. And being with Kenward, I enjoyed that. So for a nothing summer, it was a very good summer. And if I expected more permanent results, self-improvements, and I did, I had no right to. But that I expect too much out of life is no big secret. And that I've done pretty well at getting too much is no big secret either. But no satisfaction here. It seems to me that we just keep learning the same fucking things over and over again. I must say, though, that for a hopeless situation, we do pretty good at taking advantage of it. Here's some passages from Joe Brainerd's characteristic and always engaging, I remember. I remember mammy cookie jars, tomato soup, wax fruit, and church keys. I remember very long gloves. 
I remember a purple violin bottle that hung on the wall with ivy growing out of it. I remember very old people when I was very young. Their houses smelled funny. I remember on Halloween, one old lady you had to sing or dance or do something for before she would give you anything. I remember chalk. I remember when green blackboards were new. I remember a backdrop of a brick wall I painted for a play. I painted each red brick in my hand. Afterwards, it occurred to me that I could have just painted the whole thing red and put in the white lines. I remember how much I tried to like Van Gogh, and how much finally I did like him, and how much now I can't stand him. I remember a boy. He worked in a store. I spent a fortune buying things for him I didn't want. Then one day, he wasn't there anymore. I remember how sorry I felt for my father's sister. I thought that she was always on the verge of crying, when actually she just had hay fever. I remember the first erection I distinctly remember having. It was by the side of a public swimming pool. I was sunning on my back on a towel. I didn't know what to do except turn over, so I turned over. But it wouldn't go away. I got a terrible sunburn, so bad that I had to go see a doctor. I remember how much wearing a shirt hurt. I remember the organ music from As the World Turns. I remember white buck shoes with thick <laughs> I remember white buck shoes with thick pink rubber soles. Imagine Joe writing thick pink rubber soles. I remember living rooms all one color. I remember summer naps of no sleeping and Kool-Aid. I remember reading Van Gogh's letters to Theo. I remember daydreams of dying and how unhappy everybody would be. I remember daydreams of committing suicide and of the letter I would leave behind. I remember daydreams of being a dancer and being able to leap higher than anyone thought was humanly possible. I remember daydreams of being a singer, all alone on a big stage with no scenery, just one spotlight on me, singing my heart out and moving my audience to total tears of love and affection. I remember driving in cars and doing landscape paintings in my head. I still do that. I remember the tiger lilies alongside the house. I found a dime among them once. I remember a very little doll I lost under the front porch and never found. It's hard to stop, and you can stop anywhere. Um, the movement from thing to thing is a good example of art.